Welcome to the video for chapter 33 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about desideratives and gerundives. Desideratives are forms expressing a desire to do something. Sanskrit has desiderative verbs, adjectives and nouns, and we're going to be looking at each of those separately. First of all, desiderative verbs. Now, in chapter 7, we were introduced to causative verbs, which express the idea to cause someone to do something. And parallel to that, a desiderative verb expresses the idea of to desire or to want to do something. These desiderative verbs are formed by reduplicating the verbal root and then adding sa to it. Sometimes it's not sa, but isha, where the s has changed to sh due to rookie after the e. And then to that we add an ending. If the basic verb is active, then the desiderative verb is active. If the basic verb is middle, the desiderative also is likely to be middle. The reduplication um, works for consonants, just like in perfects and class 3 verbs. The details of that you can find in chapters 18 and 27 of the book, as well as in the reference grammar at the back of the book. And vowels are reduplicated as follows. Short u and long u are reduplicated as short u. All other vowels are reduplicated as e. So, for example, of bhu to be, we get the form bu bhu sha ti, he wants to be. What we have here is bhu, the root, which is reduplicated, bu bhu. Then we add sa, which changes into sha due to ruki after the u. And then we have the third singular ending, ti. So, bu bu shati, he wants to be. Pa, to drink, gives us pi pa sati, he wants to drink. And bhr, to carry, gives us bi bha risha ti, he wants to carry. Verbal roots, when used in desiderative verb forms, usually stand in zero grade before the suffix sa, and often in guna before isha. So, for example, what we just saw of bhr, we had bi bhar rishati. So, guna of bhr, i.e. bhar, in front of isha. Then there are a number of small formal irregularities. First of all, roots ending in a short vowel may lengthen this root final vowel in the desiderative. So, for example, of shru, to listen to hear, we get shu, shru shati, he wants to hear. Before sa, Root final er, vocalic r, turns into ear. So from ker to do, we get chi kir shati, he wants to do. And then there are three desideratives whose um, uh, verbal basis cannot easily be inferred at all, and so they are given here explicitly. These are ab, which is to reach, to obtain, to get, which has the desiderative ipsati, meaning either he wants to get or simply wants. Then from da to give, we get the desiderative ditsati, he wants to give. And from da to put, we get the desiderative ditsati, he wants to put. Finally, desiderative verbs form periphrastic perfects. Um, this is something that's going to be introduced next chapter. Next up, desiderative adjectives. These are formed from the stem of the corresponding desiderative verb, but what we need to do is replace the final a of the verb suffix sa with u. So from yud to fight, we get a desiderative verbal stem, yuyutsa. The corresponding desiderative adjective stem would be yuyutsu, and this would then mean desiring to fight. From chikirsha, which is the desiderative verbal stem of ker to do, so chikir shati he wants to do, we get the desiderative adjective stem chikir shu, meaning desiring or willing to do or to act. Desiderative adjectives are declined like regular short u stems, which were introduced in chapter 26. Let's briefly look at an example of a desiderative adjective in this quote from the Mahabharata. Pura deva yuge adityach agachat manusham lokam didrikshuk. 
Pura means long ago. Deva Yuge is in the God Age or in the Age of the Gods. Adityach, which is Aditya, i.e. the sun. Agachat, came. Manusham Lokam Didrkshuch. Didrkshuch is the desiderative adjective of Drsh, to see. So Didrkshuch is desiring to see. There's desiring to see whom or what. Manusham Lokam, the human world. So altogether we get a long time ago in the age of the gods, Aditya came, wanting to see the world of men or the human world. Desiderative nouns, finally, are also formed from the same stem as desiderative verbs and adjectives, but the a that we have at the end of a desiderative verb stem needs to be replaced with a to get to the desiderative noun. These desiderative nouns are declined as long a stems, which are introduced in chapter 9, and their meaning is always abstract. So, for example, from ab to get, to obtain, we get Ipsa, the desire or wish to obtain something. From shru to hear, we get shu, shrusha, the desire to hear, which is a word used to mean obedience. Next up, gerundives. Gerundives, like participles, are adjectives that are formed on the basis of a verbal stem. Their meaning expresses the notion of passive necessity which means that the gerundive of to do means having to be done. The gerundive of to eat means having to be eaten, and so on. Their form consists of three elements. First of all, the verbal root, which often stands in guna, but we also find vritti or zero grade. Then one of three suffixes, ya, tavya, or aniya, and ya is replaced by tja, if a short vowel precedes, and then finally a case ending. Among the three gerundive suffixes, ya and its alternative form tja are the most frequent, but in general the form of the gerundive of a verb cannot be predicted, neither the suffix nor the root grade. There is one mostly regular correlation, and that is in front of the suffix tavya we typically find the verbal root in guna, but, as was just said, we cannot predict whether a particular verbal root is going to use the suffix tavya. Furthermore, we actually find several gerundives formed of the same verbal root in a number of cases. So, for example, from kur, to do, to make, we find the gerundives kar tavya and karya, both meaning having to be done. And of shru, to listen or to hear, we find shru tja, Shrawaniya and Shrawaniya, all of which mean having to be listened to or having to be obeyed. A few more remarks concerning both the form and the meaning of gerundives. First of all, verbal roots that end in long a change that a into e before the gerundive suffix ya. So, for example, from da to give, we get deya meaning having to be given. Gerundives all need endings, and the endings that they use are those of short A stems for the masculine and neuter, and those of long A stems in the feminine. So basically they decline just like priach, priam, priya. You can negate gerundives with the prefix short a, and when you do that, you get one of two meanings, namely either that which must not be done or that which cannot be done. So, for example, a karya from kur means that which must not be done, that which is improper. But a dahkya from dah, dahati to burn, means which, that which cannot be burned, that which is unburnable. When you encounter a gerundive, the literal translation, having to be exed, having to be done, having to be seen, and so on, actually rarely ever makes for idiomatic English. Very often what you need to do is translate a gerundive as a relative clause. So, for example, rather than saying the having to be eaten food, you should translate the food that must be eaten. Often you should even consider translating a gerundive as an active verb. So, I saw the having to be eaten food 
is either I saw the food that should be eaten or in the active I saw the food that I should eat. The having to be defeated by us enemy could either be the enemy that must be defeated by us or perhaps even more idiomatically in English the enemy that we must defeat, that we have to defeat. Given that this entire account may have sounded a little abstract, let's look at two examples of actual gerundives in Sanskrit texts. The first example comes from the Ramayana. Sarve munayah kushilavau prashastavyau prasha shansuh. Sarve munayah means all the seers. Kushilavau is a dwandwa meaning kusha and lava, which are the two sons of Rama. Prashastavyau having to be praised which is the gerundive of prashas, formed by means of the suffix tavya and standing in the nominative, vocative, accusative, dual, masculine, agreeing with kushilavau. And then prasha shansuch, which is the perfect of prashas, so meaning they praised. So sarve munayach prasha shansuch, all the seers praised, whom? Kushilavau, kusha and lava. And Kusha and Lava are described as Prashastavyao, which is literally having to be praised. So all the seers praised having to be praised Kusha and Lava. Slightly better English, all the seers praised Kusha and Lava who had to be praised. And perhaps even more idiomatic English, Kusha and Lava who were praiseworthy. The second example comes from the Bhagavad Gita. Kaich Maya Saha Yodhavyam Asmin Rana Samutyame, Kaich by whom, Maya Saha with me, sorry, with me, Yodhavyam having to be fought, Asmin Rana Samutyame in this battle undertaking. Literally, this would say, by whom must it be fought with me in this battle undertaking? But in English, it is much better to express this as an active, so we simply ask the question, who must I fight with in this battle undertaking, or in this battle? That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful, and if you have any comments or suggestions we would love to hear from you, please do write to us at ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now, for your own work on this material, good luck and have fun.